Welcome to Out of the Rabbit Hole. We are here to celebrate a really wonderful group of uh, explorers this evening. Um, and I'm so happy to have you all joining us. Um, yay. So just a little overview of what we're going to be up to in the next hour. Um, I'll be sharing our agenda. Oops. All right, hello from down below. Uh, we will greet each other, share some introductions. Um, our class participants are going to uh, share some juicy berries they've found in the, the briar patch uh, during their past month of creative research. Um, each person will share for about five minutes. I have a special timer so that they can see their time going and it'll beep when they're done. Um, we, I definitely encourage everyone to use the chat heavily. I think when people are presenting, they're going to be sharing some ideas. I know that when we've had class time before, um, like as people were speaking, I was thinking of like, oh, I've read a book that like they should totally check out and I'll put it in the chat or there's this great resource. So please, um, you know, this is a con this session is also a continuation of that research. So if there are things popping to mind while people are sharing, um, you can share right back to them. Uh, however much time we have for our talkbacks, we also might be able to do some Q and A's with um, uh, our classmates. So that'll be great. And uh, then we'll say thanks and goodbye. Um, and I just want to introduce myself. I'm an artist, an illustrator, an explorer of everyday weirdness, uh, bringing, bringing these bunnies along with me. And um, I wanted as well to share the rabbit holes of a few classmates who couldn't make it tonight. So just a little sneak uh, preview of some really, really cool idea explorations. Um, from our peers that we um, that we oops sorry ah, that we are not that who are not joining us tonight um, I'll read those out loud sorry I took away the slide but Marissa asks how can we encourage everyone to make up their own new words and language for things that are complex and not yet described um, Ricky is exploring relationships, time, slowness, and shame. Anna is exploring possibilities for experimentation between personal processes of image making. And Julianne is working on doing justice to her close friends' politically and cultural lo culturally loaded book through a cover illustration. Um, Great, so we welcome all of you guests to partake with us tonight. Um, all right, so just to get started, I'm going to share a way of us introducing ourselves in the chat. And this is something our class has already done. So my uh, class doesn't have to answer this, so I'll um, share your ideas. So I borrowed part of this from an awesome local artist named Amy Walsh, who runs something called the Bureau of Tactical Imagination. She's awesome. So this, this is sort of an adaptation of her introduction. And I just put it in the chat. So if you go to the bottom of your screen and click that little speech bubble that says chat, you'll pull up the chat bar and you can enter your, um, your answer copy and paste and enter your answer. So here's my example. I am MJ of the Mossy Forest. I'm collecting animal figurines and creating complex societies for them to interact in. So everyone joining us today, feel free to copy and paste that and fill it out just so we get a little sense of who you are as a creative explorer. 
um, something we practiced in this class was moving toward creative processes that feel really natural to us. And I think looking back to childhood can be a way to uh, find some of those. <laughs> Welcome to Lee of the Garden. I also want to say thank you to Mount Pleasant Community Library, even though Omicron kept us from meeting in person, we have the great support of uh, Mount Pleasant Community Library. So thank you, Lee. Welcome. You, yeah, welcome, Colleen, <laughs> to the Tide Pools. Welcome to Marianne of the Hammock and Amanda Nacho of the Spice Rack. So, as we're getting to know our the people in the room here with us. Um, for my explorers, I am going to put up our timer that we've used before. So um, in just a moment when I can get it open, you'll have your five minutes kind of visually disappearing and there will be a little beep when, when we are good to shift. Welcome to Rosalind of Near the Creek, Evan of The Way Back of the Car, Erin of Forest Ponds, Mark of Pawtucket. So awesome to have you all here tonight. Hello to Jean of Books and Gardens. Great to have you. All right. Hi, Alice of the Kitchen Stove. Well, you can continue to introduce yourself if you haven't yet. Um, I would like to invite Michelle of the Crashing Waves, a collector of the strange and special, uh, our first presenter this evening to unmute and we will spotlight you and um i have the timer running for you in this little um uh in your sidebar screen so you have five minutes welcome to michelle of the crashing waves thank you so my question was, um, or what I wanted to explore was create, can creativity or creative exploration give value to everyday objects or things that we take for granted or just mindlessly throw away? And this is actually um, something that I've been thinking about for a while based on another project that I did um, that was exploring the design origins and the creativity of toilet paper, which was an object that was randomly assigned to me that I actually was really excited by um, to the, uh, my teacher was horrified basically that I was assigned toilet paper and I fell in love with just like the tactile exploration of toilet paper um, and I had a lot of fun with it. And then I started to think about 
how much garbage we throw away and whether creativity can give more value to it. So that was a question that I explored. I started with um, doing a bunch of prompts, um, led me to my uh, garbage, slinky, um, perforated paper sculpture that is still hanging around and I'll keep it for a little bit longer before I throw it away. Just an amorphous blob that you can continue to play with. Um, and as I started to do more research, I found that trash became my medium um, more than just the subject of what I was researching. So as I started to do more creative exploration, I started to do things like map out. This might be kind of hard to see. I was sketching out things like ocean currents and how they manipulate garbage in the ocean and all the cool patterns that are created by our ocean currents and how it manipulates how trash floats through um, our environment. And I thought these patterns could be really cool designs for different pattern pieces of art. And as I started to dive into that a little bit more and pick out um, how we can manipulate garbage to make things that are really cool, I started messing around with garbage and pulled some things out of the trash. Uh, this is a piece of cardboard, a bunch of nails, and wire that was wrapped around a bale of chicken coop wire <laughs> and made um, what is actually a titanium molecule. I don't know if you can see it very well, but the chicken wire is actually all the bonds of the molecules. And then as I started doing a little bit more exploration, I was like, okay, titanium is cool, but what I really thought was neat was if we think about it from the framework of garbage, again, this is actually a molecule of um, PET plastic. So I really like this idea of a molecule of plastic, something that has significantly impacted our environment, um, made in like made from a bunch of garbage that I found around my house. I don't know how well you guys can actually see it, um, but it's again the chicken wire wrapping with some nails and screws that I found and then cardboard that was rescued from the trash can. Um, and then I think the last piece that I will explore is um, doing some more mapping. I found this really cool diagram of how recycled material moves throughout the world from countries of origin to the place where it's ultimately supposed to get recycled and might not. Um, and I thought this would be the perfect piece to again take a bunch of garbage and recycled or found materials and turn it into a really cool embroidery piece. So I pulled more found cardboard from the garbage and then in my adventures of rooting around all the scraps of things that I found in my house, I found things like random scraps of t-shirts that I cut up and haven't thrown away yet for whatever reason. Um, I have tons of little bits of embroidery thread because sometimes I feel like a bird and I'm nesting and I pull bits of string and yarn from everywhere and I just keep it for no reason. Um, but what I think I will do is map this onto this piece of cardboard and then start to embroider all of these lines in different thicknesses using the different materials that I have. So t-shirt would be the thicker lines and then embroidery that threads for all the different pieces. Um, so that was, it was really fun. I don't know how trash became my medium, but I'm glad that it did. Um, and now I have all these like really cool things to do with garbage, things that I was typically gonna just throw away. Um, and the great part is that I work for a company that has an art auction um, at the end of every year to, to um, donate money to the kid to our kids foundation. So I'll do a collection, I'll put it into the art auction, and we'll see if somebody's interested in buying art made out of garbage, and the money will go to help kids, which I'm super excited about. Um, and that's it. Look at you, you ended right when it, you ended right when it beeped. You great job. <laughs> I've presented before. I was talking really <laughs> <laughs> wow yay michelle thank you so much this uh hey. so cool to see where this went because uh yeah michelle started with a 13 minute prompt and came up with that slinky slash um 
paper textured holy paper sculpture that you see um, in the back there so it's it's really wonderful to see how things have progressed um, if anyone has suggestions for Michelle of like cool books or other artists to check out that use trash um, or recycling as their medium please add those in the in the chat um, let's let's pile it on and Yay, good job, Michelle. Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right, so next up, we will hear from Jim of the Ocean, who has a little bit of overlap with Michelle. So Jim of the Ocean, uh, take it away. You have five minutes. OK, hello, everybody. Thank you. Um, yeah, I can see that I have a, a, a fellow traveler here in Michelle as a as trash pickers, and um, but I call it junk, not trash. It's and and my whole idea with this stuff is, I don't know. I was like really as a kid, I was always attracted to like um, junkyards, and and I remember um, I used to go with my dad fishing out to this pond, and on the way there, there was this house that was like a little shack, and the whole yard was completely just filled with with junk like rusted tractor wheels and and I remember that ever since I was a little kid like like I was more attracted to that that shack and his yard full of junk than anything else I can remember as a kid and um not quite sure why and you know as I got a little bit older I remember you know boys being into cars and all this stuff race you know and i wanted a vw with rusty hubcaps i remember that was the thing i wanted so for whatever reason i've always been attracted to discarded stuff and um so i i've been collecting stuff from the streets especially on walks i go on a lot of dog walks and i found that like every walk i take is like a treasure a treasure hunt and just things in the gutter and um so i started collecting a lot of things and i have a table downstairs just filled with all my junk and i've been making things out of out of this stuff for a while and i used to make mobiles and hang them like from trees and stuff um but anyway i would in this class i got the idea of a specific time frame so from Tuesday to Tuesday between our classes, I went out and I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick up stuff for one week. And whatever I find, that's what I'm going to make something out of. So that's what I did. And, I, and what I wanted to do was somehow give the, uh, give the junk life somehow and bring it, bring it to life. And so I'm going to show you what I made. And I don't know how well you can see this, but all this stuff was found in one week of treasure walks. And I don't know if you can tell what the scene is, but he's supposed to be on a psychiatrist's couch. And this is the psychiatrist, a little chicken I found. And if you can't see, and he's in a therapy session, and he's saying to the therapist, I feel like trash. <laughs> and the therapist, the little chicken, is saying, Embrace your weirdness. And I love that idea, you know, and it's supposed to be like, I don't know, like related to our culture and people were such a throwaway culture. And there's so many people that are discarded by society as well, you know, in so many ways, alcoholism, poverty, in so many ways that I wanted to somehow show the, um, the value, like you can see it as trash or you can see it as as like beauty when it's put together as folk art and creativity. So it becomes that everything has value. It's just 
how you see it, how you perceive it. And so that was my theme. And um, if you can see this little chicken, <laughs> he was like either an egg or a chicken, but I made some wire glasses for him and the stuff in his hair is actually the stuffing that was inside him. So I wanted to give him a more of a like older distinguished look. And um, I like that I actually found two feet. This is from some kind of a, I don't know, a superhero. And he had one foot as a Barbie foot. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's really fun. And the reason I do art for myself is like art therapy and just fun. I don't do anything that if it's not fun, I, it's like doesn't have that. I don't know. So anyway, that's it. Thank you. Awesome, Jim. I love it so much. Ah! <laughs> I'm trash. Embrace your weirdness. Oh man, I wanna. I'm. I think I might. Um, I might try this prompt. I encourage anyone in the room who's feeling a little sparkle in their heart from Jim's piece to to try out the same prompt of spend one week, one year on walks collecting. And then after that, make a little piece out of it. Um, amuse yourself. I love it. <laughs> so good. <laughs> I found a little um, plastic dog today. So oh, cool. that's the start of my collection. Um, all right. Thank you so much, Jim. That was awesome. While we're out wandering, we stumble into Katie of the Ocean State, a maker of beautiful, useful, and sometimes not so useful things. Katie, take it away. You have about five minutes. Hi, those are um, tough acts to follow. So I, <laughs> I signed up for this workshop because I felt sort of like in a creative drought post pandemic or during pandemic. Um, and so I thought maybe this would give me some new inspiration. And one of my favorite things that we did in the workshop was we created these little prompts um, with a noun and a verb. So some examples of the verb are connect or weave or collage or wrap. And some examples of the nouns are angles, words, what's in front of you, glitter. So one of my favorite things about the workshop was using those prompts, one from each pile and just doing whatever it said. So one of them was to take a nap, which that one was great. Um, and then I also, I collected flourishes. So I like went on and I looked at some different calligraphy flourishes and I collected them into my sketchbook. And another one I liked a lot was research squares. I researched some different squares and I filled the, the squares with lines and watercolor. Um, and so in some of our creative mess making, mind mess making, where we did just sort of like writing whatever and creating on a page, just a bunch of writing, which I guess you can't see. Um, I got into thinking about some land that my family has owned for a long time. And I was sort of on a personal introspective journey of like what do we do with the land and where did we get the land so I started researching um which led to a lot of dead ends and I have a lot of I have a lot of places to go with that in terms of like the historical society and all kinds of things like that but I did um obtain a book written by a great great grandfather about the land because he lived on it too and then I also on my own kind of like one of my favorite things that I did was think about some of the different places on the land and sort of like paint how I felt about being on the land as a kid, which I don't think probably means anything to anyone else, but I can see in here like the, the fire pit and like the spot where we camped when I was a kid. And like, this is where, this is where we buried pets, like cats and mice that the cat ate and stuff like that. And like, there was this weird little, skinny part with really tall trees so that's this um there was a spot where it ended in a cul-de-sac which is here um so it kind of was painting just the feelings that i had about different spaces on the land when i was a kid um 
So I have a lot, I have, I still have a ways to go on the research part of it, but that's what I got out of this. And I really enjoyed it a lot. Um, yeah. And I think I didn't take up five minutes, but I have many more five minutes of my life to continue to research. So thank you so much for all the inspiration. I enjoyed this so much. Yay, Katie. So great. I love seeing, um, I love seeing how you're thinking through images and not putting too much weight on each one. But like, I remember during the first class that we made prompts, one, one of your words was flow and sort of hearing you describe that you were in a bit of a creative stuck place. Um, it makes me feel happy that uh, you found some flow and you found some yeah. squares and triangles flow. and there's your flow. Yeah, it was. <laughs> the prompts were to collage flow so I just like collaged what was in front of me and let it flow and that's what it ended up being awesome and check out the the chat you're getting lots of props and um some suggestions for stuff to check out um thank, so you. thank you so much Katie great great work and uh keep on keeping on I'd love to see where your research goes um all right so next up, we are shifting toward Carrie of the Earth, who is walking in the woods. Let's hear what Carrie hears. Take it away, Carrie. Hey, everyone. So um, I, my, my rabbit hole is basically like a thought experiment. Um, and I'm just going to read my notes. I didn't do as much creating as other folks, but, um, but I did do a lot of researching. So ultimately what I came to the course with um, was kind of recognizing my interest in the unknown and what part we play in it. Um, we started brainstorming about things that we like and things that we have questions about. So kind of riffing off the unknown, some of my top brainstorming ideas for possible research projects um, were the cosmos, magnetic fields, communication, and then under communication, I had non-human forms, um, the relationship between fungi and trees, um, the relationships between dreams and the conscious, um, what gets passed on from generation to generation, like trauma and its inverse, um, telepathy, and then moving out of the communication category, I had the inner verse. Um, Katie mentioned the little card decks that we had with, um, with a noun and a verb. So when I was playing with the deck, um, one of the things that I ended up creating was a communications grab bag. So initially I just started putting like pretty, you know, generic communication um, ideas in the bag. So I had like stamps, paper, pencil, that sort of thing. But then I started remembering other forms of nonverbal communication. And I made quick business cards for them with URLs on them where the recipient of the grab bag per se could um, go to these websites and get more information on things like Morse code, American Sign Language, binary code, um, HTML, Python, JavaScript, you know, that sort of thing, Braille. Uh, and that was kind of cool when I was thinking about um, communication in a nonverbal way. And the other um, deck activity that I did was a Cosmos collage. So that is the same thing. I don't know if you guys can see it. It was just a quick collage of a random kid drawing um, magazine backgrounds. And it was a nice meditation on the messiness of the unknown for me. So that was, that was kind of nice to... Um, Eventually I started teasing out a question and my question, I settled on communication, but because it seemed like the category that had the most things listed under it. And it was, you know, I don't know, it just seems to come up every, uh, you know, a lot. So we're social creatures, but my, but my question was, what are some forms of nonverbal communication between sentient beings and systems? So then I just started researching some more. Um, I started reading some quotes by P.L. Travers, who wrote Mary Poppins, <laughs> and was, I think, like a student of Sufism, so uh, they, they were pretty interesting. I, I started looking at that. I started listening to a couple of, like, Radiolab podcasts. One was on the forest canopy, and another was the relationship between trees and fungi, 
And what I learned from the Canopy um, Radio Lab was that the Canopy creates a ton of nitrogen rich soil that trees will eventually need the nutrients from that soil. And the trees will send out canopy roots. So not roots from like the base of the tree, but canopy roots. They can grow these roots out of nowhere and then feed on the soil, which I thought was really cool. And then there was this whole other episode. Um, I can't remember the name of that episode, uh, but it was about the relationship between fungi and trees. And so fungi need sugars, the trees produce sugars, the trees need nitrogen and minerals, and the fungi can grab those from the soil. Um, I, apparently without fungi, then as a nutrient source, trees would be less than three feet tall and floppy. So um, the two life forms seem to communicate as best we know via chemicals. Um, so that was really, really interesting to me too. And then I started thinking about like nonverbal passing of information as a way for species to evolve over generations. And I remembered something that I had heard um, a few years ago about grandparents' hardships affecting their grandchildren's health. So um, like any modern human, I Googled it and I found the information is um, known as the over Calix study in Sweden which um, combined, which come through tons of data over several generations and discovered that a grandparent's hardships can skip a generation and affect their grandchildren's DNA positively. So grandparents who ha have experienced some sort of hardship and the data from this study, they were studying um, folks who live through famine and, um, and they found that those, uh, those grandkids ended up having lower instances of heart disease and like a significantly longer life expand. I think when they did like, it was something like 30 some odd years longer. It was like wild, it was incredible. So that led me to um, reading a little bit more about epigenetics, which is the study of the epigenome. And the epigenome is a dynamic layer of information I'm quoting now, um, associated with DNA, that differs between individuals and can be altered through various experiences and environments. Um, so where I'm at currently is I'm really, really, really interested in this dynamic layer of in information that happens independently of human consciousness. And it's something I'll continue to learn about and explore probably via poetry and collage, which to me both lend themselves nicely to teasing something that feels known out of the unknown. Um, and I'll just stop there. Wow, Carrie! Oh my gosh, what a huge, <laughs> what a that cool. It was topic. so fun. Your rabbit hole has so many sub rabbit holes, and I love the idea of moving. <laughs> right? I love that. I love the idea of moving toward poetry and collage as a next, you know, as a next step to to try out some of those sub rabbit holes. <laughs> Um, I agree, yeah. like, um, especially, yeah, yeah, thinking about how to communicate without, with and without words, um, some of those bigger ideas and, and to show things. Um, um, it sounds really cool. I would be excited to see what you come up with next. Um, and if any of my presenters have somewhere that they do share their work, um, you know, go ahead and put that in the chat for people to follow you if you have social media or something. And no, you know, I, I also acknowledge the, I think this whole course is about exploring without necessarily having something to show or being product oriented. So I just wanted to underscore that. I think it's really important. I think there's a lot of pressure to like show, 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 show everything. And um, as creatives, like sometimes there's use in that and sometimes it tips the other way and it becomes the opposite of useful for us. So, <laughs> um, great. It looks like there's some cool recommendations um, for Carrie in the chat of, yeah, more, more sources of inspiration. And for anyone here who is similarly inspired by this rabbit hole, um, we are going to shift next to hear from Emily of the Shore. They're reading hordes of fantasy and sci-fi books with a question in mind. So go ahead and take it away, Emily. Let us know what you have been thinking about. Here's your five minutes. 
Oh, we can't hear you for some reason. It doesn't look like you're on mute. Maybe it's your headphones. How is that? Yeah, we can hear you now. Great. Heck yeah. All right. So um, like Carrie, I kind of uh, use this as an experience for not necessarily creating an end product, but kind of taking joy in the research part because I was in college very much the person that was doing the research for the essay and writing the essay the 24 hours before the essay was due. Uh, so <laughs> being out of college now and like not having to worry about that, I really appreciated slowing down. And one thing I focused on um, that always is kind of sitting in the back of my head is representation. And so I started there and then we made the um, prompt cards that everyone was talking about. And my first prompt was actually to um, deconstruct space, which was very vague and very difficult. Um, but I ended up making this big mind mess um, about it and kind of wiggled my way towards media being a space um, kind of separated from reality where we can kind of uh, create these narratives and stuff to share experiences and lives with other people. And so the big question I ended up working on was um, how do narratives uh, create a space to foster compassion in media? Uh, because I listen to a lot of uh, you know podcasts, I watch TV shows, um, I read a lot of books and it's kind of through those, you're always seeing a, there's like a typical experience that you'll see portrayed there. And um, I try to focus on getting, you know, the non-typical experiences, which can be very hard. Like five years ago, walking into say like a Barnes and Noble, I would have like a list of queer books I wanted to check out. And I would go through like one by one and they just wouldn't be there because they were only like smaller presses that didn't get distributed as much. And um, so I wanted to explore how the narrative can build that empathy. And I actually found out that in the medical field, which was not something I expected to be dipping into, um, there's this thing called narrative empathy where the clinicians will write a narrative experience of the symptoms instead of just like a checklist to help them empathize with the patient more and see the patient more as a person as opposed to a list of just symptoms. Um, and that helps foster more empathy between the doctor and the patient and it helps better care be achieved because the doctor is listening more openly and trying to work through it with them. And um, I also found a lot of research which actually kind of I borrowed from one of my old school papers uh, about how representation helps not only the people like in the community that's being represented, but other people, you know, kind of relate more to the people. Uh, like for example, like I, not to, I don't wanna bring politics, but like Bill Cosby was a big person a while ago. The Cosby show really did a lot for the black um, community and to kind of see help people see black families as, you know, doctors and more than just what people thought the stereotypes were before that. And uh, yeah, so I don't entirely know where I'm gonna go with this information. I just am collecting it right now. Uh, I might write a little thing. I might um, uh, just kind of like include, uh, make more of an effort to include diversity. I have seen We Need Diverse books. Um, it was, I think I used it, I tried to use it for a paper once, um, and it just, uh, it was a really good resource, and I really enjoy it, and I do, I uh, second it. But yeah, so I just am exploring how diversity is good, and it's, it's a really fascinating subject because there's so many different types of diversity um, that can affect everything in so many different ways. Like, um, you know, there's religion, race, gender, sexuality, all that stuff. And it's very cool to see how we can kind of try and encapsulate the human experience in these narratives. And I think that's all I've got. Awesome. Thank you so much, Emily. And throughout the course, it was really cool to hear um, some of the examples of when you were reading things with this 
research lens on how you were sort of thinking through them differently and also thinking about people in your life and how repeated exposure to narratives that uh, gave context for things outside their own lives, how you also sort of saw people in your life over time having a bit more openness and a bit more empathy and understanding. Um, I think that's something we can all relate to either from ourselves and sort of like getting to know someone who's really different from us or from um, even from media, which is your focus. So if anyone has more suggestions for Emily on like cool, cool stuff to check out along this lines, um, drop them in the chat for sure. Um, thank you so much. Really important topic um, and very appropriate for a course taking place in a library. <laughs> um, so uh, to finish us up with our sharers today is Karen Lee. And Karen Lee is up in a tree on the cliffs above Lake Michigan, studying the people below. Tell us about your explorations, Karen Lee. Um, well, first I want to thank everybody else for sharing theirs. Really inspiring. Um, uh, I'm not a visual artist, I'm a writer. And so it's um, fascinating for me to get to see the process that um, non-writers go through and um, how similar it is and how different it is. And so that's been really fascinating for me during this session. Um, so all the stuff that we had been doing before this was really fun for me to um, get some, some processes um, together, but this week kind of slid off the rails from where I had been going because a friend of mine died um, this week and he chose to die. Um, he had Alzheimer's and he uh, lives in Holland on a pirate ship, in fact, that was a B&B. &B. Um, and so there they have uh, physician assisted suicide is legal. And so this week he chose to die. And uh, he had been doing these long um, sessions on Facebook Live where he would just go on for an hour, an hour and a half and just be on and talk with everyone. Um, and uh, he was American, I knew him in Kansas and we had done a zine together back in the 90s. And he was uh, very activist, very political his whole life. Um, he you know, made it through this San Francisco AIDS crisis. He was an AIDS activist. He became a lawyer to do adoption activism for um, non-traditional folks who wanted to adopt. Um, and then he fell in love and he moved to Holland and continued to, um, to be an activist. And so really to the very last moment of his life, he insisted in being online so that people who were still thinking about this issue, this process of having a right to die um, in the way that you want, um, could experience his experience of it until the last minute. So it was really fascinating. So, uh, so, but in the spirit of that, I wanted to, you know, keep with the research. So I went back to the zines that we had done um, years ago, back in the nineties, this was, you know, in the way, way back. And we were a whole collective of folks and we did uh, a lot of different issues. You could tell this was, you know, um, first Bush, um, the, uh, before the W. Um, so we were doing a lot of these zines and I went back and, and read them and, and read his work, which was really fantastic. He's a beautiful writer, read things I didn't even remember that I had written um, uh, back then. And um, so that was the first thing that, that I did. I went back and I rewatched um, all of his live sessions um, that he did. And then I started thinking about what, um, I wanted to think about what that conversation will be like here, how different it would be if he had not gone to um, Holland and that conversation were happening here. And so in a way to sort of start getting something down on paper, I also did the exercise, obviously really fantastic exercise for everyone where I had the two uh, piles of, um, uh, of verb and, and nouns. And so I got um, doodle, I don't know if you can see that, and um, puzzles um, and solutions for my two things. So um, I came up with 
this as I guess my first step. And please, everyone, I am not a visual artist. <laughs> Let me just point that, point that out again for everyone of you who are. Um, so I made this. I don't know if you can see it. Um, um, can I share screen on here? Do I have sharing screen sharing permission? Yeah, we can yeah. do that. Also. Um, okay. So let me see if I can share the screen and I think I have it up here. And so that's what I came up with. And so his name was Scott Curry. And so uh, I just sort of created this puzzle um, about him and about the things in his life and about euthanasia and uh, Alzheimer's, um, all of which are, are big um, things. And just uh, thinking about some of these things uh, to get it down and now thinking about what I can do with this sort of in my own medium, where I can take this. Um, I'm thinking about doing um, what we call a collage essay, um, which tries to mirror linguistically uh, what uh, visual artists do um, visually and, uh, and, but also, make something that is, uh, you know, and is in the essay form. And so I'm thinking about maybe trying to do something, you know, keeping in the spirit of the puzzle that um, requires me to use each of these words in this puzzle somewhere in the collage essay. Um, as And just, you know, see what comes of that and just sort of dedicate it to Scott. So that's that. Thank you so much, Karen Lee. I love, love, love this example of like using your creative processes to process um, and remember a wonderful friend and to process um, his choice um, to end his life and to look back on your memories together. Um, I think research can be, and art making, whatever it is, can be so critical for healing and um, grappling with stuff that's so, can be so overwhelming or heavy or um, emotional. So um, thank you so much for, for sharing of, of your just, and this is all just in this past week. So um, yeah, thank you for for sharing that with us as a great example of um, um, creative research um, as a way to process. Um, and yeah, there's some, some love in the chat for you. <laughs> Check it out. Um, wow, we had, Oh, I just feel so excited about all of our classmates projects and um, again for anyone in my group if you have somewhere that you share your work a website or something like that um, go ahead and drop that in the chat so people can keep in touch with your cool work when you do if you do want to share it um, we have seven minutes and I would be very happy for um, our rabbit hole explorers. If you have any specific questions that you wanna ask this lovely larger group of people that relate to your research, um, you, can, you can pose those questions. Um, otherwise, I will have our audience members either raise a hand on Zoom or put um, put something in the chat just to let us know you have a question you want to ask and you can ask any of our we're like turning into a panel now so our rabbit hole explorers are um, open for biz if you have a question or comment um, we'd love to hear it and yes someone's asking um, if I will be offering this again. Uh, the I don't have a concrete plan yet, but I would love to offer it again. So the best way to keep in touch and see when I'm offering it again is to sign up um, for my newsletter. And I'm putting that in the 
chat, I share my personal work and um, almost every time there's some free class or other um, uh, for kids or adults or both. So uh, check that out. And um, yeah, anyone have questions for the audience? Audience, do you have questions for the presenters? Yeah, one piece of feedback from our from our group was, wow, we would love to keep keep going and sustain this and have a creative peer group that has these varied practices. Like we have people in the group who do metal smithing and we have writers and we have visual artists and we have um, avid readers and um, thinkers of all stripes. And um, we all seem to also really like nature we were sharing and nerding out about like secret places to go secret beaches and parks and views <laughs> all right so there's a question from Anne emily lannon has anyone had a piece of media change their views on a particular group of people so emily is asking related to that question about um um the impacts of representation and how narratives can provide a space to build compassion. Um, so if anyone wants to share back to Emily, like a particular piece of media that helped shape your views on a group of people, let them know. Any other questions from the audience? Great, there's some comments coming in. Thank you, Lee. Mm -hmm. All right, and there's another comment that I am only seeing, but uh, for Emily, check out the Human Library. They have a Facebook page. Jean has participated in two readings with four books, so maybe it's um, there's some sharing and reading together that happens. Um. So we can continue sharing and if any last minute questions are coming up, that's great. Let's hear them. Um, I want to really, really congratulate this group of people for following exploration for exploration's sake, even when there's not a clear end product in sight. And just to let my participants know, some of us ended up moving towards something projecty. And some of us maybe didn't as much, but the more rabbit holes you make, the more connections happen later. And you might be surprised at how your rabbit hole that you made now kind of has kind of like seeps into your practice as a creative person or just a curious person in the world and will come around in five years or something and sort of surprise you and say, hey, I'm back in this new way. And you'll be like, oh, hey, rabbit hole. 
<laughs> um, so awesome. And I hope it inspires our audience members as well to do a little prompt making for yourself and to really follow the fun. That's kind of like what I think um, I like to encourage people to do. And I think most of our participants really felt some freedom by just going with the path of least resistance because like if you're going where the passion is, then um, really cool results will follow. Um, awesome. All right. Uh, well, let, uh, maybe our class can all unmute and just say a little woo before we leave. <laughs> can everyone unmute and we'll make a little cheer. <laughs> Everyone who can, I don't know if I've trapped some of the. Uh, there it is. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, rabbit. Woo. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks, MJ. You're welcome. Thank you. Good Thank night, you. everyone. Thank you. And Bye, everyone. Good luck with your rabbit holes. Bye. Good night. Good night. Thanks, MJ. Night.